Dylan. Sorry I'm late, buddy. Dude, it is so hard for taxis to get direction now because it's like yeah. GPS travel, it's all dark. No oh, lights. yeah. Good see you, man. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you know, so like, it'd be stuff like this. Like, uh, you see if it. So, this is one of the, the people that you guys were able to deliver uh, cook at home kits to. That's cool. Yeah. I like uh, that. So what was in the boxes? Um, Non-perishable foods, yeah. so grains, you know, um, canned meats, um, cereals, um, and uh, yeah, you know, it was it was just each one of these videos just warmed my heart so much. Yeah, I can definitely see that. You know, got they were very happy. These, yeah, um, you know, a couple of these videos were were like women really old women yeah. who were in bed, you know, and the volunteers would come and say, hey, you know, we're volunteers, you know, maybe they didn't even know where they were, yeah, you know. Yeah, wow. Um, That's crazy. And, you know, I mean, how else were they going to get food, you know? Yeah. These people could not really even get out of bed, yeah. you know? That's great. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. To uh, doing good things on our team. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like being here just for the last week, meeting a bunch of uh, hockey volunteers, I can say that you guys are way more hardcore and like grassroots and kind of like one on one, making like a very tangible difference in like individuals' lives. Yeah. You know, maybe not on like the, you know, giant like build a whole skyscraper kind of style. Yeah. Uh, but like I can see like each individual person doing so much here and yeah. seeing you guys is really cool. Absolutely. You know? And I don't know, volunteering here has been probably the best thing I've ever done. Um, it's so rewarding and um, you know I've been able to do a variety of things. You know, I went from food to delivering medicine. Um, uh, you know, I'll send medical supplies to to families or you know to medics that yeah. are working you know on the front. Um, well, that was another thing I noticed about Parkview that's very different than in Kiev or somewhere else. Where there, people kind of tend to just stick on one project for a long time, whether it's medicine or food or um, you know whatever it is. But here, it's kind of like, all right, what do you guys need me to do this week? What do you need me to do today? Yeah. Yeah, there's a great, vibrant volunteer community here. Um, you know, I think it's, I don't know, um, it's been the place that I've concentrated my efforts and I've seen it grow from when I first got here in May to now where, you know, we can get together, you know, and have just tons of volunteers. Yeah. The, the amount of international volunteers, like I first came here, you know, the beginning of May, it was me and two other international Spanish volunteers, and we just worked with the Ukrainians because we didn't. If there were other international volunteers, we didn't know where they were. We certainly didn't get in touch with them. Um, but now it seems like a really organized group, and actually, really organized. after dinner, we're going to be heading to kind of like a volunteer. Drink night on Saturday, like networking, drinking, just and also just yeah. a, a way to just like unwind after a week. Absolutely, yeah. you know, it's you know you spend a lot of time here, whereas you know people back home have the luxury of being able to not focus on the war. You know, if you spend all your time here, it's sort of all you focus on. Yeah. And so having those nights where you can just unwind, you know, with your fellow volunteers and just try to have a good time in the name of, of victory, you know, in, in you know. Um, well, definitely, like, now we're just having like one or two drinks, but after this war ends, that's gonna be, uh, with the bottles for, 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 for a long time as well. Oh yeah. So let's, let's uh, enjoy. Yeah. All right, we got our food. How's the chicken looking? It's looking real good. Nice, medium. Yeah. I have an Asian style. This was supposed to be spinach, but actually this is beans, but I'm sure it's going to be tasty. Special noho, buddy. Bon appetit. Yeah, bon appetit. Guys, that steak was incredible. It was like a ribeye steak that was already pre-cut for me, which is nice. With some Asian sauce and vegetables. 
like a little bit too salty, even for me, but excellent, 100%. After 11 bucks, best tea in the world. All right. Bye, guys. See you. Jack you. Now we're gonna head to LF Club. All right. This is actually a nice car too. What is this? You, you don't have any door handles, buddy. I was like, maybe it's like one of those uh, tricky, you know, like how Teslas and stuff kind of like these kind of like tricky handles. And I just realized like, no, you just don't have any. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're having deep conversations here with the volunteers because these motherfuckers are going into the danger zone pretty soon. So we're talking about what we want to do with our, our body. <laughs> Knock on wood, if we die in Ukraine. So. I, well, I mean, I just posed the question. I didn't really have a good answer for it, but I'm just... Uh, can I pass on this? Like, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll go first. Yeah. Okay. You can, can you hold the camera real quick? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, friends and family, dear YouTube, yeah. if I die in Ukraine, please do not waste money repatriating my body to the US. It's a fucking waste of money. Cremate me here, sprinkle my ashes in the Pro in the park, whatever you want to do. If someone in my family like begs for my body to go back, Send it in a Ziploc bag, just like ashes, and just send it to Yukoprosta. Don't do two day air, none of that crazy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Cheapest pack. I mean, I'm dead anyway. There's no rush, okay? Damn. Put it in the box, all right? Don't worry about insurance. Not worth much. But I, I like, I'm partially joking, but I'm serious. Like, okay. just, just like, I, don't waste any more money. I'm dead. Like, just, you know, I mean, I would, it'd be nice to have, like, you know, people like tweet something, a little tribute to Johnny. Yeah, we, we'll do that. But, like, don't waste any money, okay? Can I just ask some clarifying questions? Yeah, please. I just want to make sure I have this. Okay. By the way, I don't know that this is great. Like, I feel like that, that this is the stuff that you don't talk about before you go on a mission. Okay. But I just want to make sure I have this. So if anything happens to you, you uh -huh. want your ashes put in a Ziploc bag yes. and Nova Posta. Yes. Which is the no, Ukrainian. No, oh no, Uka Posta, which is cheaper. Even better? <laughs> yeah. Back to your family. Yeah, but I don't think I mean, they need it. Do they don't think, need it. Well, just, well, how do you think that, how's that going? Like, how's that scene unfold? I mean, your mom or your dad or your... Your loved ones, like, there's a door, or a doorbell, know. and like, oh, here's... I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's a that's... shame for the kids to outlive with the parents. So I'll, I would say, sprinkle sprinkle my ashes in, in Ukraine. I'll die mother, you know, near the motherland monument somewhere. Yeah. I'm honestly happy with that. If any of these organs are still good, give them away to someone. Organ donor on my, on my driver license. So. But I feel like if, if, if there's a grenade that goes right here. Yeah. And it's me or you. <clears throat> okay, I feel like it's for the greater good that I jump on that. Thing. I don't have Why? like because you know you have family though, you have kids. I have nobody. But you, you, you got the world. You have got the internet. I got enough videos out there. I've been, I'm like I'm just going I mean, down. You could raise like a bunch of money. You can raise a enough. bunch of money. It's, it's enough. I just want you to know if the grave falls right there and you and I are handing out aid, I'm I'm, I'm jumping on it. And don't jump on it too. I'm, I'm, then we're gonna be I'm not. Going, all right, I, I won't jump on it. Don't worry. I'm not a hero. Resolve. I'll be running that way. Or I'll throw it back. <laughs> but I'm not jumping on a grenade. Just let you guys know. I'll be a fucking hero back home. Yeah. I'll be like. He saved Johnny YouTuber. I'll be like, that guy was fucking crazy. I just met that, I met that guy once. <laughs> 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 you feel like shit. And the grenade took feel like shit the, for like the 10 minutes. minutes. The grenade took three minutes to go off. <laughs> like, we could have called an Uber. I saved the world. I think this is a good plan. I feel like we're not supposed to be talking about this, though. You okay. know, you don't like talk about these kind of things. I think it's like a no Yeah, but it's necessary, I think. It's not necessary. really necessary. No. Okay, so speaking of which. Well, Dylan, well, what should uh, we do with your body? When I die in Ukraine. No, no, no. If you die, motherfucker, knock on wood. I mean, this is getting out of control. Hopefully, you know, um, sooner than later. No. Um, um, well, you know, I, I think that since I'm dead, um, I don't know how much it, it's my opinion should should play into it. Um, fucking Christ, just how do you want, what do you want us to do with your fucking body? <laughs> Well, I mean, may, maybe my mother or sister will have strong feelings. Um, I mean, 
you know, <laughs> if I die in Ukraine, it's probably not going to be, you know, like, like I'm, I'm not going to be a full capacity it, yes I okay mean, should, we, should we call your mom right now and ask what, what she's not gonna be an what we should do thing. <laughs> not not be an for sure. okay <laughs> um but um yeah i mean you know maybe okay i okay may, if they have strong feelings maybe maybe but, you know we're we gonna find that out them? before you die so we can make plans exactly okay this. uh can you take his phone call his mom to say hey what should we do with dylan's body uh, yeah, I'll get right on that. <laughs> I feel like and, but you try to clarify that he's not actually dead yet. It's just like... Yeah. What do we, what do, we do with Dylan's body? Uh, he's In Ukraine. <laughs> she'll, she'll, she's, she's, you know, I think she's probably already expecting that call one day. Okay. You know, so, it's, yeah. What would your mom want, want us to do with your body? Oh, I think she'd want my body back. Really? Um, strength, yeah. The whole, actual whole body, not, not just another Ziploc. No, I think she might want to have oh, that. That's, that's, that's pricey, mate. Fucking inconvenient, yeah. Um, sorry, man. No, no, no. Goody. Okay. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I think enough. economy, let's go with the, with the zip clock. Okay. Prob 724 East Mayfair. Okay, <laughs> so we know. L London. No. Right. Sound, I mean, this gentleman may have... May have uh, <laughs> what, what do you want to happen to your body if you're killed in Ukraine? This is the subject matter that the... Are you famous YouTuber? What, if we, if we die in Ukraine? Yeah. Uh, if I can leave it here, man, I'll cover sunflower. Yeah, oh, I like that. That's a good answer. Good answer. I like, I like that. Sunflower. That's a good answer. Okay. Johnny? Thank you. Uh, cremate me. Yeah. But I want it sent Nova Posta with travel insurance. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, for sure. So for sure. on the value, what should we write? Uh, that's a um, question. Oh. Priceless. Priceless, exactly. <laughs> if Johnny okay. if Johnny dies here, I'm gonna die too because his dad's gonna like fucking kill him. Yeah, yeah. Because you brought him here. Yeah. So I also that's an easy answer for me. Just like these guys just, have just send two me. for one. Yeah, yeah. But like, like seriously, yeah, like, yeah. does anyone actually worry about this? Because you know we're in relatively safety, but yeah, definitely it's not as safe as being in heard, at home. You know. How many people have been killed in the United States yeah. since the beginning of the year? I don't know. Like 79 yeah. as of two days ago. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's a big ass country, though. How many Dylan people in the U.S.? came here to be safe. Yeah. Dylan's from Portland. Portland. He came to U yeah. Ukraine. To He's from to East to Mayfair, mate. You know? The ghettos of the U.K. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think it's random. Yeah. I think on the subject That's of dying in, yes. in Ukraine, I think everybody, everyone who comes here who's Westerner, not from Ukraine, should know that if, if, if there's a high risk of dying here, mm -hmm. no matter where you are in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, and if, if, you, if you've got a plan to where you go or what you do after you die, and then, you know, it's one of those things. I mean, I, I personally don't have a whip. You know, I, I, do you have any money to, to no, actually no, give I, away? I, I left my family in March to come oh. over here, and I've been here for a year now. So, well, nearly a year. So... I don't want to go back to the UK. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm going to live in Ukraine forever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm only 25. Yeah. 25 there you go. Yeah. Do you have kids? Yeah. I do. So, I have two. We need your opinion. So, we're talking about what we're going to do with our bodies if we die in Ukraine. Uh, is this like a, a topic that um, Ukrainians ever talk about, like uh, with their family, or is it just like off limits to talk about death? Yeah, but um, my son is 18, I mean my daughter is 16. Hmm. You're both in high school. Uh, what happened? So, uh, they got uh, no soul. So, mm -hmm. how he will decide mm -hmm. it will be. So. Okay. <laughs> and in uh, Ukraine, is it more common for cremation or burial? Is it always yeah. burial? Like a dig in the ground? Like a body? Have you ever looked at the cemeteries here? Mm -hmm. Or do people get cremated? Like, uh, you know what is cremation? When we, like, burn the body. Uh, I don't... Uh, I saw, uh, it's, when you, it's when you uh, turn the body into ashes. Like, is it common in Ukraine to do this? Uh, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Is it common or no? Okay. Well, it's possible then for us. Okay. Yeah, good. All right, guys. Promise you, no more tough topics like this. But exactly. This exactly. is literally what we talk about when we're sitting around oh, with a bunch of volunteers. <laughs> is it actually? Oh. Johnny and I almost bit it twice. Really? And I feel like we we're 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 good. It's yeah. one of those things where yeah. like we're good. If we didn't die in those two circumstances, which is only two circumstances, we really where where was this? One was in Zaporizhia, like our third day here, mm -hmm. and we both know it was my fault. 
We both do. I had my American cell phone. It, it was right, it, it, things shifted in the, uh, we were in Zaporizhia, right when they announced the referendum and all that mm -hmm. stuff and all hell broke loose. Sure. And they started the shelling down there. And one night we were, it was boom, boom, boom. I mean, it was, and then I turned my phone off and, then, and that was it. Oh, the wow. last one, nobody got hurt. Nobody got hurt, but that was about. So you think they're following your, your US SIM card? I mean, I would love to think that they weren't, and everybody was like, no, man, it wasn't your, it was definitely my fault. So I mm -hmm. definitely switched out my, my swim card at that yeah. point. That, so, the, so you spent the $4 to buy a Ukrainian swim card? It, it seemed, uh, <laughs> it, it, it seemed like a good, good investment. What? He was That's like, no, no, like, let's, yeah. not, let's not spend this money. Like, like, I, you better I, use something else. Actually, it was the one that he gave me. Yeah. When we first got here. They yeah. were yeah. trying to kill you, Dylan. Those two SIM cards you So the, uh, the other uh -huh. time, was uh -huh. about four, four, three weeks ago? Yeah. When like, so like an idiot, when I got this ambulance, which I didn't realize was like, it could be converted to a real life ambulance. So okay. I put out a video being like, hey, we're going to Ukraine. What can we do? How can we help? Because we just support other organizations. Yeah. We're not, and like everybody wanted this, including members of the 28th mechanized. Uh, the, Brigade. Yeah. Okay. So they, they, you know, they had some people get a hold of me and we're like, why don't you come down here and do we, medical evacuations, second line medical evacuations. Uh -huh. I'm like, guys flattered. I'm a fucking lawyer. Uh -huh. I've never been in the military uh -huh. and have no medical training whatsoever. John too. And they said, don't worry about it. None required. You have an ambulance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look the part. So we went down. I met you with the 28th. Probably. I thought you looked familiar. <laughs> no way. We, you drove that big fucking ambulance all the way to the... Yeah. I know you, man. Yeah, yes. We went, we Holy went. shit. We met. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. probably right after we almost died. Yeah. Did you, uh, is it outside the bowling alley in uh, Costa Fucking Costa Christ, yes. Yeah, right. We, yeah, we yeah. slept by the swimming pool. Yeah, man. Fucking oh, so yeah. quiet. It just took you that long to figure yeah. this shit out. I mean, we, were, like, we, we were doing Kazavax with the, with, the with the German guys from 28. Yeah. Great. Uh, Ezra was uh, paired with me. He was a German. But you probably knew what you were doing a little bit more. Anyway, we, we, bad timing, okay. too. We showed up the day that, like, the Russians made all those gains. So like we were we were there to do like second line evacs and the second line like quickly became the first line. Oh no. John actually took a soldier to Crown of Tours. Yeah. But anyway, we were on the we were out there Save at life, midnight. Oh uh, not save a life, but maybe. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah man, I, a drone know. fixed on his car and his car <coughs> wouldn't fucking start. Oh that's not good. That's never good. Did you get did you get shelled? Uh I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss her. No, we didn't get shelled. No, so, yeah. no, I remember it was too far. Yeah, I remember. That is fucking crazy. Guys. We agreed yeah, to like yeah. to try that for 24 hours. That, yeah. That's how desperate they were yeah. uh, to do that. And actually, it probably would have worked if, the, if it didn't. Um... Yeah. Do you still have the ambulance? Yeah. 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 Uh, my anyway, my so buddy yeah. Brandon, I don't know if anyone's met him, he's a Canadian um, combat medic now. <laughs> he, uh, he came, no experience besides like a short course back in the army a long time ago he did a i think a 10 or 12 day crash course uh, got put on the front lines uh and now now he's done and i think now, now he's in like back mood or something but he's he's been like in all the hot spots 12 day training course uh you know kazi vax and he hit a anti-personnel mind Jesus. almost died so like this is a sensitive subject. Like it's like we kind of joke about it over beers, but like well, you know, you tens know, of thousands friend, of people are dying. Uh, you know? Andrew, yeah. I'm missing. And then oh yeah, yeah, the British guy. My friend. Okay. Um, he, I was here when he got here. That weekend that they went missing, I went to Poland to pick up our mail, and I got to Poland on Saturday. He left on Friday for Solidar. And on Sunday, I picked up our stuff. On Monday, I was gonna send him a message, hey, I got our shit, let's get together, blah, blah, blah. And then right before I was about to, you know, get a message out to him, that's when I found out they were missing. Two British men who were working as volunteers in Ukraine are missing. Christopher Parry, who's 28, and 48-year-old Andrew Bagshaw were last seen on Friday in the eastern Donetsk region, where fighting has been intense. It's understood Mr. Parry from Truro in Cornwall had been helping people evacuate the city of Bakhmut. The family of Mr. Bagshaw say he was delivering food and medicine and helping elderly people move away from the front line. Vincent McAvinney reports. 
Christopher Parry, who's been in Ukraine since last March, is believed to have rescued hundreds of people from the front lines of the conflict over recent months. I've not experienced Christmas and war either. Uh, it's very peculiar to be here. You kind of forget that it's Christmas at all. Like, I really have no idea. The Foreign Office advises against all travel to Ukraine and has urged British citizens in the country to leave due to the risk to life. Nevertheless, in a statement, a Foreign Office spokesman confirmed, we are supporting the families of two British men who have gone missing in Ukraine. This guy, yeah. that's some crazy and shit, and respect. Um, we have so, probably uh, hard to forget at night when you almost die. Okay, all right, so we got the floor. What happened, Bakhmut? So, folks talk about the Kazovacs or, or just... He wasn't there when we almost died. Okay. But he did what we did, almost dying for like... A month, a long time. A long time. So the fact that he's alive. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we we, we got That's crazy. We we were in touch with pricing. <laughs> pricing messaged me because I knew him from before, and uh, he said we need people to come down because I was in Uspanifka at the time, which is okay. uh, east east Donbass. Uh -huh. So we drove up. <laughs> we went down to the where the twenty eighth day. We met him. We went down to the CCP, and uh, we had uh, the very first casualty we ever had, which was we was only in the CCP for like God forty minutes. And uh, this guy turned up with a, uh, he spoke English and uh, he, he was saying he had pain, it's back here. Mm -hmm. And he was with a paramedic and uh, she said, go around, go around to his back and feel like blood sweep. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem is you put your gloves on, but these soldiers are covered in mud. Mm -hmm. So you try and blood sweep and uh, all you're getting is, is mud. Yeah. So you take your gloves off and then she told me to cut the body armor. Yeah. So I cut the body armor, rip the body armor off this guy. And they have about three or four layers of warm cut on. Mm -hmm. So you have to cut all their clothes off from the back. And uh, I, I saw that this guy, he had a, a huge, a huge, huge hole here. Wow. Yeah, and like a shrapnel one, a shrapnel mm -hmm. one. But he was saying that his pain was hit. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was saying to him, I was like, mate, hey, you, you have a laceration wound in your, in your back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, don't panic. And I shouldn't have said that because he did panic. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yeah, you can't say don't, yeah, don't panic. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's my mistake. Calm down, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Calm the fuck down. Yeah, yeah. It was my mistake. That was my mistake. <laughs> yeah, that's right. but, uh, he, did, he did panic and he went into shock and he uh -huh. died. I wouldn't say that was my fault he died, but yeah. he, he went into shock and he died. Yeah, shame, but uh, they, they put him in the ambulance and uh, he, they, they wheeled him off. We had a, a, a second guy that had shot him into his neck. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I thank the Ukrainians for doing this because he turned up to the CCP with a chest seal on uh -huh. his neck. And I've never seen that done before. Oh, wow, with, uh, nice. chest seal, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was here, and uh, we, we we put him into into the vehicle. And uh, Braveheart was driving, and I was in the back, and he was in the front. And we were driving to the field hospital, mm -hmm. and I was holding his neck. And uh, every time this man swallowed, uh, blood would come wow, out of his because he was he was swallowing his blood, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was coming out of his chest seal all, all down my arm and all over my hands. And uh, I, was, I was trying to hold him in, and uh, this guy survived. That was good. That's good. And uh, we drove all the way to the hospital, and as as we got him out of the car, because mm -hmm. it was just me and Braveheart, and uh, he, he collapsed. Yeah. Did either of you had any medical training before this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. we had medical training before that. Okay. Yeah. We would. Uh, so I'd done my medical training in uh, Mission in mm -hmm. March, early March. Okay. And uh, but Braveheart, it was a civilian before the war. Mm -hmm. But he's a fucking warrior, man. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we 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 fucking. <laughs> We went to do uh, <laughs> extractions for the 28th, which is like a, from Bakhmut here, the 28th is in Kostyanivka, and there's like a, a big, like a, a World War II sort of era field, mm -hmm. you know? And we're there, and there's like a, a farmhouse, and the, the guys are staying there, like a, a mortar team. Mm -hmm. And we're there, and uh, we were doing extractions for the 28th. And uh, a, a guy turned up, and uh, he, he, was, he had no trousers on. I don't know what happened to his trousers, mm -hmm. you know, they were gone. And uh, he had a big, huge lash here, and uh, he had shrap multiple shrapnel wow. wounds to his chest. So he had a sucking chest wound. We, at the time, didn't have chest seals. So there's nothing we could do for his chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend Smokey was sitting in the, in the so we have the, the Mitsubishi L200, mm -hmm. which is the armored car we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're in the back, Adam's driving. Uh, me, Smokey, the commander of this man, was in the back, cramped. And um, I never knew that blood could, could squirt from cuffs and uh, I was holding this guy's muscles down like this because I was cutting his, mm -hmm. his trousers off and I was holding his muscles down and uh, it, 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 it it squirted into my face mm. and uh, I have a picture of it it's oh, man. My face. and uh, I was like fuck man I was holding this guy's face and he's like moaning he's moaning and uh, he, he died he died mm -hmm. But we, we drove him to the hospital, but he died on, on the way Man. to the hospital. And the thing is, you, you get so used to the death, and this guy died, and then 
once a guy's dead, he's dead. You know, yeah, yeah. We, we pick him up, we throw him to the side, and we go to the next guy. Mm -hmm. You know, we. we I laugh because it's 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 funny, but it's not. Yes. And uh, we we had a guy that turned up. I knew he was dead yes. straight away. This guy turned up in the back of an ambulance, and uh, we pulled him off on a stretcher. His intestines were hanging out. Well, I have been shit, man. Yeah, yeah. It was fucking. You could smell it. You know, <laughs> yeah, this guy had been on the front, dead yeah. there for maybe realistically a few hours. You know, and uh, that's we wild. Took him off. And there was a guy next to him, his friend, who was in the trench with him. Who had to sit with this guy from the zero line back to the CCP, looking at his dead friend, and I felt really bad for this guy. And uh, we, 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 this guy, we, we put him on the floor, and then we had to leave him. He was dead, you know. Mm -hmm. We left him, and we trapped this guy, and th that's what it's like. You know? Yeah, it's you save some, you lose some, but you try because you don't. You didn't know he was going to die. There was a chance he could have made it to the hospital. Yeah, I mean, could have got saved. That's, that's that's what we do, man. We we we, 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 we come here to help. Yeah, so, and then that's it. Yeah. Why did why the fuck did you come? To Ukraine. So I so I first came to Ukraine in 2019. Yeah. Uh, with the British Army, we okay. were training in TDF. What is and, TDF? Uh, the sorry? task task force. What? Uh, uh, Territorial Defense. Force. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, I was here for three months in Pokrovsk, and then went to Zhitomir. Mm -hmm. And then I left the army in April 2021. Mm -hmm. And then I went back home to my parents, and mm -hmm. I followed the build up on the on the border. Ah, uh, yeah. You know? And then I said, I remember saying to my dad, I said to him, I said, if Russia invades Ukraine, I'm fucking going. Yeah. You know, so in 2019, they would just want to prepare just in case no, 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 it happened? No, 2019, or? the fighting was happening in Donbass. Yeah. So we went to train a TDF for the guys going to the okay. Donbass. But yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Well, yeah. thanks for coming. Welcome, welcome to Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, man. I know about Ukraine. It's fucking sweet. Yeah. Do you, you want to you yeah, shout out so like your... I don't know. I, 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 all of you guys, if you guys want to share like your Instagram, your Twitter, or the foundations. Yeah. Uh, I'll give a shout out to my fucking ex-commander. He was mm -hmm. a fucking legend, he's dead. Yeah. But he was a fucking geezer, man. He helped me through Irupin, and uh, he's a legend. So okay. thank you. Thank you. What's his name? Say again. What's his name? Mafu. Mafu. Shout out to Mafu. Dylan, do you have a, do you want to shout out anything? Or did you tell, why did you, um, tell, tell us why you came here? Well, um, you know, I came here because, um, you know, when the war started, um, it just totally took over sort of my inner monologue, my thoughts. I couldn't focus on anything. I couldn't really sleep. Um, and it was, uh, it just felt like the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, talked to my mom and sister and they, you know, I just said, I have to do this. Um, oh. And... You know, that's when I made the decision to come. Uh, okay. I guess it, uh, do a shout out to my late father, um, who uh, I think inspired me to, I don't know, uh, who made me the person that I am today. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. Um, okay. We're glad you're Slava here too. Ukraini. Pardon, Slava. What's your late father's name? Uh, my late father's name is uh, John. John. Thank you, John. All right. You want to say anything? Tell us <laughs> what, what, your, your posh life in Mayfair? <laughs> um, I came out here because I have spent the last uh, last couple of years studying um, health in a conflict context. Um, and I spent a long time following the build-up um, and then the spring and uh, summer watching all the awful things that were happening here and um, eventually um, I found myself with the opportunity to come out here and I thought I can't sit around and watch any longer. And I got to Poland on Saturday. He left on Friday for Solodar. And on Sunday I picked up our stuff on Monday, I was going to send him a message. Hey, I got our shit. Let's get together, blah, blah, blah. And then right before I was about to, you know, get a message out to him, that's when I found out they were missing. Hmm. Are you working with any organizations or? Um, I've worked with an awesome group from the UK called Ukraine Humanitarian Hub um, and another called Medics to Medics. Uh -huh. um, 
and an American group called uh, New Horizons for Children. Okay. And they're all doing fantastic work. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, do you guys do you guys want to stay anonymous or do you guys want to say like your Twitter or your Instagram or anything? I'm good. You're good? All right. And what about you? Any organizations or anything? Yeah. Uh, Ben, John, and Will for Ukraine, which used to be Ben for Ukraine, so it might be on there, but it's just uh, Ben Beijing, John Gardner, yeah. and uh, I don't know, we just came here to play our part, right, John? Yeah. Yeah, Slava Ukraini. Chrome Slava, guys. Slava Ukraini. Yeah. All right, guys, I just got home, and uh, kind of, it was, it, was, it was nice hanging out with the volunteers. Uh, Harky has the best volunteer group I've met anywhere in Ukraine. If not anywhere in the world. I mean, coming to Ukraine is already hard enough, but coming and then you you literally have to pass through Lviv and then Kiev and then keep going to get here. So most people come through Poland and there's a lot of volunteers in Lviv. And to be honest, most of them don't do anything. You know, or they do very little. Um, there's, I mean, not that much happening in Lviv. Lviv's never really been in, in any danger. Uh, the kind of best thing they can do is help with some of the transport of goods from, from Poland or other countries into Lviv. But then that's kind of the, the first, you know, 10 or 20%. Uh, Kiev has a lot of the kind of bigger organizations, you know, the NGOs, the, the big groups. And... There, you know, you have a whole, whole mixture of people, but in general, Kiev is kind of like a nice place to be. Uh, then you have the crazy people who are in, like, you know, Bakhmut or Dean Pro or kind of those frontline places. But normally, they don't really live there for very long. Or the ones that do, you know, they're like risking their lives all the time. But those, those people are hardcore. Good morning. Well, I'm certainly feeling a lot better than the last time I uploaded. This is safest clothes in Solodar. Hospital, right by the hospital, the old hospital. It's not a hospital. They don't recommend us going there. Yeah. But, you know, they aren't like, they're not saying, no, 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 no. The commander said that, um, commander said that we should not go here. What's the yellow? Hmm? What's the yellow about? Some of them are thrill, you know, thrill seekers. They like hearing the explosions in the background. They like feeling the adrenaline. Uh, you know, all while helping, obviously, right? Uh, people in Kharkiv, I think they're kind of the best mix where it's kind of like Chiang Mai, you know, the in terms of like tourism. If you want to say this, it's not war tourism, but uh, hear me out, okay? So people... A tourist will go to Bangkok, usually the worst tourists ever, because they're the ones that are scared to venture out. They have like a, sh you know, they're there for a few days and then they leave. Uh, the ones that go down the islands want to go just to, just, you know, to take some photos and say I've been down the islands. But the tourists or the people who make it down to Chiang, to Chiang Mai, up to Chiang Mai, they had to have gone through some other cities first. And by the time you get to Chiang Mai, they're very down to earth. They're very chill. Being in Chiang Mai is not very cool. There's no beach. There's no, you know, must-sees. It's not like Bali where he takes photos and be like, oh, wow, you're in Chiang Mai. It's such an amazing place. Kharkiv is a little bit like the Chiang Mai of Ukraine where it's kind of rough. You know, it's a nice place if you know it. But there's no point of coming here for two days. If you're going to come, you're going to come for a couple of months. And I think that's why it attracts a very certain type of people and very cool people. You know, you're always going to get a couple of dickheads or a couple idiots here and there. But in general, people in Kharkiv are very cool, very down to earth. And they really, really want to help. And they've all been very salt of the earth kind of people and very realistic. The conversations I have with all the volunteers over this last week, everybody gets it. They know that during the occupation, during the hard times, it was like, it was worth the risk 
of driving these crazy areas worth you know the money you spend on gas worth the the donations because people were generally suffering with, with no other alternatives but now that this war has been going on for so long the big organizations have had time to organize and be here there's no reason why the red cross shouldn't be doing everything that these volunteers do and the fact that they're not even though they have a billion dollars in funding or donations, actually, not funding, but donations. It means that the Red Cross is fucking up somewhere. And actually, I had dinner with a couple of guys from Red Cross Kharkiv. And they are doing a lot with a very small budget. And they keep saying that Red Cross Kiev gets all the money. And that Kharkiv is getting much too little bit of it to make, a, make an impact. But what they don't realize is people in Red Cross Kiev are saying, not just saying, but uh, understanding that Red Cross International has all the money and Red Cross Kiev or Red Cross Ukraine gets 2% of the funding, even though 100% of the donations that came in in March and April were directed towards Ukraine, or at least you know, 99% of it. So those hundreds of millions of dollars should have went to Red Cross Kharkiv, Red Cross Kiev, Red Cross, you know, Odessa or whatever it is. But they just hoarded the money to do no, God knows what. You know, maybe they're finally going to build those homes in Haiti that they promised that they were supposed to build years ago. Or maybe it's going to go to admin fees or marketing and that's why it's not worth it sometimes for people like you've met tonight to be risking their lives driving to these dangerous areas when there's other alternatives now. Um, you know, we we're talking about it saying like, at what point are you just enabling people to, to continue living in a place that they shouldn't be living in? Whether it's Hassan or Bakhmud or these areas, you know, uh, I was talking to Brandon about it after he got hit by a mine. And I said, Brandon, why are you risking your life to evacuate people who had every chance in the world to leave, but they chose to stay in Bakhmud where they knew the Russians were right around the corner. Like they had a month, two months, three months to leave. And you, you've driven to their house many times. You know, just because on the seventh time they would decide to go with you, or you can convince them to go with you, like it's not worth risking your life to do it. And it's sad to me. You know, like I think help should go to those who don't have the other options and the ones who really just need the help, you know, they deserve the help. I think everybody gets, you know, a chance. But, you know, you have these volunteers from all different countries with mothers and fathers back home and family and they don't want to see their kids you know another british volunteer go missing and usually when it goes when you go missing in ukraine during the war it's either you get captured by russia or you you're dead those those are the only two options you know so yeah this has been a tough video to make guys uh again uh i don't expect this to be monetized <laughs> even for a second i'm not even gonna try so if you want to help out somehow show your appreciation all the links to the the different charities are below you can donate through youtube to Rizom for ukraine it's a ukrainian charity uh all that money goes directly to them through my channel so far we've raised thirty seven thousand dollars to them so thank you guys very much to you uh you can donate to the gofundme been distributing that money locally as well um you know if you want to buy me a beer uh thank you guys for those who, who have done that uh sometimes we just need a fucking beer here man it's like we're, we're talking about sensitive subjects so it's always appreciated you know anyways uh that's it for now and slav ukraine guys it's my last day in kharkiv tomorrow i'm gonna head back to 
to Kyiv, to my home, to act my actual home. Um, continue life and see what I can do from there. So, love you guys. Stay safe. Love you, friend. All right, guys. So, I almost didn't get home. One of the volunteers had to, had to drive because it was almost 10 o'clock. And I didn't realize that in Kharkiv, the curfew's at 10, not 11.